Hi everyone, I'm Lisa and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. Today's quick tip video involves using your favorite framelits and window sheets. You're probably thinking, well, what are we going to do with these? Well, we're going to die cut on here. This tip was shared with me by my friend Kylie and I thought it was brilliant and I knew you had to know how to do it yourself. I'm going to bring in my Big Shot. I'm a big fan of using my magnetic platform when I'm using my framelits. It creates just a really great contact between the paper, or in this case, the window sheet when we're die cutting. And this is gonna be using also the precision base plate because I have a very intricate die. I have had wonderful success using this to die cut these intricate pieces. So here's my piece of acetate, and here is my framelit and a clear mat over the top. Now you won't need a clear mat on the bottom like you're used to simply because the precision base plate takes its place. And then we're gonna crank. And this is gonna sound horrible. Com Doesn't it sound like it's just breaking the glass or your framelit? But it's not. I thought the same thing the first time that I did it. The reason is, is that the acetate is a lot stronger than cardstock and it's pliable, so it has to die cut through all those small areas. Let me take the pieces out and look, just look how easy they're coming out. That precision base plate is just a great thing. And I actually was surprised how easily that this die cut, considering the material is so different. So we're gonna actually use this as a mask. I've got a piece here of Whisper White cardstock and I'm gonna put a little smidge, I'm talking just a little smidge of snail adhesive on the back. And then what I usually do is I kind of manhandle it a little bit with the oils from my skin so that kind of reduces the stickiness. I want it to kind of be tacked down without sliding, but be able to lift it to put onto my card. So we're gonna use this as the mask. So I'm bringing you in a little closer. So I'm gonna start up here at the top. I tried using a post-it note and I didn't have great success because I had to actually come across the paper. So I had like a skip mark. It might work well for you, but I found just kind of tacking down the paper works best. I'm using Calypso Coral ink and I have a wedge of sponge and you can see that I used this in my previous example. And I've got a finished card for you, so make sure you stick with me at the end. So I'm gonna ink up my sponge and I'm gonna dab a little bit off. And the reason is, is I wanna make sure I can control the ink. And I'm gonna hold down the stencil here at the top so it's in one place, and then I'm gonna sponge over it. And then as I run out of ink, I can go back over it again and just get myself a really light impression. I haven't had any trouble with actually holding the uh, window sheet in place and moving my fingers. I was concerned that I might transfer the ink um, that might be laying on top, but look at that, but I didn't. All right, one more, and then I'm gonna show you my card. Put another one here, and so here I'm just working half at a time. The great thing about the sponge is it allows you to make areas darker and lighter, and I find it a lot easier to control for me than a sponge dauber. Um, if you've got really good dauber skills, go ahead and try it with a dauber as well. But I like the fact that I can cover a broader area and make it softer if I want it. So let's say for instance here in the center I want it darker. I'm just gonna add a little bit more ink right there and then look, isn't that stunning? So, so pretty. All right, here's my finished card using this exact same stencil. Isn't that striking? All right, so this is Calypso Coral, but are you ready? I actually ended up mounting it on Flirty Flamingo cardstock. It turns out that the sponging is just a shade lighter and it coordinated with this so well. And I just used some of the Eastern Palace Designer Series paper and gold, glimmer paper, gold foil, and of course I embossed my words in gold. A really simple card, but so striking. I have one other for you that I wanna share. And this one I actually die cut from the Swirly Scribbles. And here's a panel that I made. This is using Sweet Sugar Plum. So much fun. Now I'm gonna encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel and to my, my blog because you're not gonna to wanna to miss next week's tip when I use this exact same piece of paper to teach you another really fun and interesting technique. So make sure you come on back. I am so glad that you joined me today, everyone. I hope that you've enjoyed this new way to make your own masks for sponging. Have a great day. I'll see you next time.